One of the questions I get quite a lot from students after they get certified is, how do I become a great PM? Now it sounds backwards, doesn't it? Because you have people getting certified and after they get certified, they now realize they actually don't know enough about how to practically manage projects. Now, this is not everyone. I know some of you, you do it in the other direction. You become a fantastic PM, phenomenal PM, and then you need to make it official. You have to get certified because your company asks you to, or you're trying to move from one company to another, and they don't give you the time of day except you're certified. But I want to speak today to those folks who are certified, or maybe not, and still feel they don't have enough project management skill. I would like to pose a challenge to you. If you feel I'm not a PM, I don't have skills to be a PM, I'm not good enough to be a PM, I want to challenge you that you are already managing projects. What is a project? It's a temporary endeavor that we undertake to get value, products and value from those products, services, value from those services, results, value from the results. We put it into a time box, has a beginning, has an end, and we look to achieve value. You do this every single day. Driving to work is a project, has a start, has an end, has resources, your vehicle, gas, yourself, to get to the end goal. You have a team, perhaps, someone reading directions or someone on the other end of the line. It's a project. What about cooking dinner? Look at it as a project, has a begin, has an end. Look, the problem with a lot of people is they overcomplicate what projects are. A project has a start, an end, and a goal. So whether it's cooking dinner, whether it's driving to work, whether it's writing a book, whether it's writing a thesis, whatever it is that has a beginning and end, a goal, benefits and value to be realized from that, it's a project. So don't complicate it. Now let's talk about managing projects as a profession. Managing projects for your personal self versus managing it for a profession are related. Some of you in doing things for yourself, you realize you already have skills. Some of you doing things for yourself, ask the question, you know what, I could be paid to do something like this. And some of you actually get into projects for that reason. But for those of you who feel, I don't have enough, or I don't know how to be a good PM, today we're gonna to talk about how you can amp up your project management skills to be a great project manager, a phenomenal project manager. Now, I'll keep it very simple. I have seven steps, but I'm gonna whittle down these seven steps into three categories. The three categories are as follows. One, leadership. Leadership. My mentor, John C. Maxwell, he says, everything rises and falls on leadership. What is leadership? Well, my mentor, John, again, has another quote on leadership. And it's to be expected because we call John America's leadership guru. And John says, the true measure of leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. He says, he who thinks he leads but has no one following is only taking a walk. It's all about influence. So in order to be a great PM, you should be a great leader and you should be able to influence. Now someone says, well, Phil, what makes you say that? Experience being the best teacher. Because if you're not able to influence your stakeholders, your team members, your customer, your sponsor, you're not really leading. You're only taking a walk, no one's following. So you need to be able to lead. And in order to lead, you need to learn to lead. So if anyone's coming at me saying, oh, I'm a dreadful PM, or I'll never be a good PM, I ask them, are you influencing? Are you a great influencer of yourself? Are you a great influencer of others? If the answer is yes, then you have potential. Now, the next thing I would like to talk about is being aware of the business, the business. You work in a company. Are you aware of the business? What do you know about the business? What's your mission statement? What's your vision statement? Do you know what they are? If you don't know the vision and the mission, that ain't good. You got to know them. And if you know the vision and the mission and you know what your company is about, 
that is the beginning of you understanding the business landscape. And that is another ingredient for success. Why do I say it's an ingredient for success? Because understanding the vision, the mission, and the business landscape in a firm gives you the tapestry to navigate those political landmines and to begin building your circle of influence, your network of influence. The problem with a lot of PMs, they say, oh, I don't want to be involved in politics, politics, politics. If you really want to be a great PM, you got to be able to navigate the political landscape. And a lot of people aren't navigating the political landscape. So I want to challenge you. Think about the political landscape. Think about the business. Think about the products you develop. Think about the big players in the industry. Think about those who are competitors who could threaten your position as a company. If you're thinking in this line, you've got a good ingredient to be a great PM. And not just that, but to really understand the nuts and bolts of a business. You know what kills a lot of PMs? The inability to learn the business, the inability to learn the language, the inability to be technically competent. Now, it's often been said, oh, you don't need to be a technical expert to be a PM. I beg to differ. If you really want to make an impact, you really want to get to that next level, you better understand the technicalities of the business. I don't care whether it's building hardware, developing software, healthcare, whatever. You better understand what that industry is built on. You're in healthcare and you don't know the nuts and bolts of Medicare and Medicaid. You cannot explain to me the core systems used for healthcare in your company or in government or in a hospital. You're not there yet. You need to. Now, there are a lot of great PMs who are very good with people, very good with business. But when it comes to the technicalities of systems, they fail. Don't be like that. Know your systems. Know what your organization uses to support itself. Understand the products, the services, the results inside out and how they are developed, how they are produced, how they are delivered. This will take you to the next level. The final thing I want to talk about is being technically capable as a project manager from a PM standpoint, as far as processes, tools, techniques, and domains of project management. These are talked about in the PMI's talent triangle. So why don't we go on down to the PMI's talent triangle where you will see leadership, business, and being technically competent. Now, when I saw PMI come out with this, I knew immediately that I was going to build an institute, a leadership institute for project managers, because what excited me as a leadership coach and trainer is seeing them put leadership on the map. I said, yes, PMI's gotten it. They understand because everything rises and falls on leadership. Remember, so it says in today's increasingly complex and competitive global marketplace, technical skills are simply not enough. You see how I put technical last? because it's not enough. Companies are seeking added skills in leadership and business intelligence to support longer range strategic objectives that contribute to the bottom line. The ideal skill set, the PMI talent triangle, is a combination of technical leadership and strategic and business management expertise. To stay relevant and competitive, you must develop these employer demanded skills. Not sure where your competencies, courses, and PDUs fit in? Well, let's talk about this in a little bit more detail. But before we go there, I really want to echo the point that everything rises and falls on leadership. And that's why at the heart of this Leadership Institute I talked about, we focus on a number of things surrounding leadership, such as continuity, finishing what you started, growth, direction, thought expansion, masterminding, collaboration, inspiration, success, and vision. And of course, who else would I call for our keynote other than my mentor, John C. Maxwell? So if you feel stuck in understanding how to be a great PM and working on the job as a great leader, you need to go on down to the Project Leadership Institute website. It's www.projectleadershipinstitute.com. Now let's talk about leadership. Let's really focus in on what PMI has up here because this is what my training, my coaching is built on. It's built on being able to brainstorm 
and mastermind. It's built on being able to coach and mentor others, adding value to others, understanding how to resolve conflict, understanding emotional intelligence, influencing. There's that word again. The true measure of leadership is influence. Interpersonal skills, listening, negotiation, problem solving, and team building. That is the leadership component. Moving on, we have the technical component, but let's go to business before we come back there. So taking a look at the business piece, strategic and business management, we can see we've got benefits management and realization, business acumen, business models, structures, competitive analysis, a lot of stuff. But take a look, strategic planning, analysis. What does it mean? Strategy is understanding the map for the organization to move from point A to point B, planning how to get there, understanding what the organization thrives on and supporting the organization every step of the way. So strategic and business management is huge. It's a great skill. PMs that don't have that, they'll find it hard to move up the ladder. Looking at technical right there in the middle, agile practices. That's why a lot of our training is centered on agile, data gathering and modeling, earn value management. That excites me seeing that there. I know it works for a lot of companies, not for everyone, but for a lot of companies. Governance, life cycle management, performance management, requirements management and traceability, risk management, schedule management, scope management, schedule management in terms of time. And we have budget and cost estimation. All of those are the technical. So all of that to hammer home the point, my friends, you want to be a great project manager, it starts off on the right. Leadership, a can-do attitude. I remember the first time I was trying to break into this gargantuan industry. It was very, very hard. Even though I had a master's degree in construction IT, I wanted to get into the project management realms of things within the United States. I'd already done a little bit of operations and project management elsewhere in the United Kingdom. However, it was hard. And it was hard because I didn't have the certificate that people were looking for. What was it? PMP. So for those of you that are PMPs, I want to speak to you. If you're certified, do you know that that immediately opens inroads to you? You immediately have a lot of potential power, potential energy to get jobs you want, any job that you want. That's part one. So part one could be looked at as, I need to get certified. Otherwise, no one's going to look at me, just like I found it hard. But do you know what I had in lieu of a certificate? I had determination, grit, doggedness, ruggedness, and toughness. So what did I do? I kept on looking and trying and knocking on doors and coming with my A-game. And I learned a software application, believe it or not, that is needed across industry. And it's Microsoft Project. And I got really good at it. And I started teaching it even before I got certified. So when a job came calling, for Microsoft Project, I got it. But I got the job because of one ingredient, one ingredient. Those of you who know MS Project, you know, you could learn it on paper, but if you haven't used it in some respects, you ain't used it. And the question is really about resource loading, cost management in MS Project. So when I was thrown a challenge, can you do this? Can, can you, can you resource loads? Can you manage budgets? Even though I knew about it, but hadn't used it, I had a can-do attitude. So when the question came at me, I was ready. I said, yeah, I can do anything, anything in this thing. I'll do it. So I was given the job. Did I deliver? You betcha, I delivered. And I trained other people to do what I did. But at first, it was a little bit rough, but I had a can-do attitude. Some of you ain't even going for jobs. You're not even going for those jobs because you feel, oh, can't do that. Come on now, where's your can-do attitude? You gotta be rugged, dogged, tough. You gotta be crazy to get to the pinnacle because when you're trying to climb up that pyramid, you're gonna find yourself sliding down. What are you gonna do? Give up, go back home to mommy? No, you're not. You're gonna climb that thing 
and you're gonna bring your A game. So for those PMs, some of you, you're certified, you are a capable certified project management professional and you're scared. Why are you scared? You've proven you've got the aptitude and the ability to take on the tough stuff like the crazy exam you just did. How dare you diminish your level of intelligence and your tolerance for ambiguity? How dare you do that to yourself? What's the matter with you? Come on now, come on now, you know, you have the aptitude and the ability to do what you just did on that crazy exam. And you're here saying you can't do it. Seriously, is that all you've got? Come on now, pick yourself up, tell yourself, I did this, I can do anything. You know, the PMP exam has been said to be the most challenging, difficult, crazy exam known to people in the business space. Now, I'm not just talking about people that have got degrees. I'm talking about people that have got a boatload of certificates. In addition to PMP, they all say the same thing. That exam, what's up with that exam? I told a lawyer once, and this lawyer said, my goodness, I mean, I passed the bar exam for goodness sake. This one? Thought in my flesh, failed it the first time. Think about that. A lawyer. I've trained scores of project engineers who are also PEs, professional engineers. And to be quite honest, they all say the same thing. PE is one thing. It's my area of strength. It's my giftedness. But the project management professional exam is crazy. So my friends, you pass the PMP or any PMI exam at that, you need to remember what you did. And you need to let that give you the acceleration to go forward and conquer, study. Look, for those of you who did it, I applaud you. You read this ridiculous thing. Now, I don't say that disrespectfully, but it's ridiculously huge. My name is in it. I respect it. But you read it. You studied it, you digested it. Come on now, what are you saying? You can do a lot more than you're giving yourself credit for. So when, you, when you're saying, I don't know if I can do that job, I don't know if I can do that project. Come on, give me a break. Yes, you can. You need to be rugged, dogged, tough, aggressive, and push till you get to your goal. You know, that's what you need to do. So for PMs who feel, I need to improve. Oh, I can't do this job. Well, I'm going to skip that job. No, you're not doing it right. Go like I did. Go. Get all the knowledge you need. Get all the practice you need. Stop shortchanging yourself. Stop doing the Mickey Mouse jobs. Yes, no disrespect. Some jobs are great, but they're Mickey Mouse jobs for you. They're Mickey Mouse jobs for you. There's a starting point, but there's a place where you need to stretch. And some of you, you ain't stretching. You ain't stretching and you need to stretch. So going back here to my talent triangle here, strategic, pull up your socks on that one. Leadership, pull up your socks on that one. And technical, if there were areas as you got ready for the exam, you feel you need to improve, then improve them. It's that simple. Let's move forward and talk about my seven steps to being a great PM. Step one, like I said, you got to have self-confidence, you've got to have a can-do attitude, you've got to be rugged, dogged, and tough. Someone says, Phil, how do I develop a can-do attitude? Remember what you've been, where you've come from, what you can do, what you've done, and stop listening to voices in your head. There's always going to be a gremlin. There's always going to be a gremlin right here talking smack to you. There's always going to be, you can't do it. Why are you entertaining that? There was a gremlin on my shoulder when I went into that office that day and said, oh, you better not say you can do it. But I ignored the gremlin and I said, yes. And that propelled me in a great fashion. So the question isn't, oh, have you done this before? No. When the question comes at you, can you do this? You better say yes. You kidding me? You're going to let an opportunity pass you by? Come on now. You can do it. You just got to tell yourself, 
make a mental adjustment. The problem is a lot of times we are scared of the work involved. We know that, oh, there's a boatload of work before I can get to that level. So what? Get on the treadmill, do it. Get on the treadmill of knowledge and do it. Learn it. Get it into your head. You can do it. You're capable. I have a lot of confidence in you. Lots of you went through my training and I hear you talking like that. You know I'm going to correct you. You know, another thing I hear people say is, oh, I'm going to take this exam. And, you know, if I don't pass it, I'm like, come on, be quiet. Have a can-do attitude. PMA, positive mental attitude. You got to have that. Without the positive mental attitude, there's no way you're going to be a great PM because every day has a curveball. Every day has something thrown at you that you need to resolve. Secondly, do not procrastinate. Actions that need to be taken immediately need to be taken immediately. If someone needs a warning to get out of the building, you need a warning. If someone needs a warning about what's coming down the pike on a project and you delay, you don't want to tell them, or you see blatantly your milestones are going to the dogs. You see it coming and you don't see anything because you're trying to be cute. Are you kidding me? No. Get all up in the business of whatever that thing is. Let people know. Let people know what's coming. Don't try to be cute. Don't procrastinate. Some other procrastination approaches that we PMs have is, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Don't do the I'll do it tomorrow. You know the best thing you could do? To do, doing, done. To do, doing, done. Kanban board. Have a Kanban board and follow Kanban practices to accelerate you and get you to move on stuff. Some of you got boatloads of stuff. You ain't documented it. You don't have a schedule. No. So if you have a Kanban board and you are disciplined and you follow the process, you follow the mindset of limiting your whip, your work in progress, it helps you. I'm not even talking about on the project level. I'm just talking about on the project manager level. These are things you should be doing, my friends. All right. So do not procrastinate. Be proactive with the team. Don't wait till the team is crying for help before you get them help. Don't wait until the team is submerged before you jump in to save them. Don't wait until team members are having arguments before you do team building. Don't wait until team members are pulling their hair out before you get them assistance in some way or before you intervene, project manager, the project manager needs to borrow a page from the world of Scrum and Agile, seriously. Or let me just say the world of Agile. Read the Agile Manifesto. Read the values. Read the principles. That's exactly how you need to be thinking. Team-focused, team-oriented. That's what we're looking for. A lot of folks, they're not team-focused. They're task-focused. And because they're task-focused, the team knows this, and they don't put in their best. Be a people person. Be a people person. Think about your team. Get them what they need. Help them. Be on their side. Don't throw them under the bus. Don't play the blame game. That's the mindset of great project management. Be proactive with the team. Have the courage to share tough stuff and have difficult conversations. A lot of PMs are very guilty of being in a boardroom surrounded by executives and feeling, oh, I'm out of place. Seriously? You don't realize that you're there to help those people. If you could change your mindset of, I'm here to help them. You're not there to compete with them. You're not there to feel like, oh, I'm on that level. No, you come at that meeting, come to that meeting with a mindset of, I'm here to help. I'm here to serve. It's a servant leader mindset. And the servant leader mindset is one that takes out any selfishness. A lot of people are selfish because they're thinking about, oh, me, I'm scared of these people, the executives. Come on, now you're there to help them. Change your mindset. Be there to help. Now, executives, well, they're just people. CEOs, CIOs, CFOs, they don't have two heads. They're just normal people. <laughs> they're just normal. I was watching uh, SNL a couple of days ago and Elon Musk was on there with his mom. Just a normal guy. 
even though he owns a multi-billion company? If you can realize we're all people and you look for some part of humanity in the people around you, it will be less of, oh, it's so intimidated, to I'm here to help. That's really what it is. So PMs who feel jittery in the boardroom, get a grip, get a grip. Stop doing that. Think of yourself as a servant leader. See yourself as someone having value and substance to add to the conversation. Just add a little, add your perspective. Your perspective as a project manager is a valuable perspective. Did you know that? So you wanna find that value that you can add and really understand the value that you can add to these folks. Moving on to the next one, have a schedule, a Kanban board, something. Now this goes above and beyond just having it for yourself. But if you're leading a team and you don't have a schedule, you don't have a Kanban board, you don't have a milestone chart, what are you doing, seriously? Everyone knows that in order to get to success, you should have a plan. And I'm not talking about a plan for every single thing in the PMBOK guide. I'm just saying a schedule oriented guide. People need to understand time frame. They need to understand urgency. They need to understand the duration that they have, the time box, so that they can deliver. And if you don't have this for your team, seriously, what are you doing? Next, engage stakeholders proactively. Be proactive. Do not wait until the dying hours to engage stakeholders. Put this on your calendar as something that needs to be done on a regular basis. Lastly, and I put this last for a reason, it is not the most important, but a lot of times people put it as the most important. Follow a method. What do I mean by follow a method? Because this could bring up a lot of com controversy and discussions among factions. My method is better than yours. My agile is better than yours. My waterfall is better than yours. No, don't do that. Understand what the organization wants. If the organization says, you should follow this method for a project of this size. Do it, follow the method. But when you're doing your personal work, you can tailor your own personal work, your own domain. But if management asks for a particular method to be used, go ahead and use it. But if the method should be something else, maybe you need to educate them. Maybe if it's tending towards chaos, how about using some more agile oriented techniques? Or if it's, so ridiculously predictive, how about letting management know about the Stacy complexity model and coaching them and training them and helping them to see why a predictive approach or something tending towards a predictive approach is best. Why not do that? So when it comes to having a method to the madness, whether you're going with waterfall, whether you're going with a hybrid model, whether you're going with scrum or Kanban or scrum ban, whatever you're doing, have a method and know what you're doing, project manager, all right? And really know your method inside out. Know the framework inside out. If you're using Scrum, know it inside out. Do what other people have done. Take an exam to help you, like the certified Scrum master, the professional Scrum master. If you're using Agile, you want to learn more about it. Well, of course, do the most obvious thing. You might have one of these. How about reading it again? You read it to pass the exam, read it again, right? And then start getting into some depth, you know? Maybe you find yourself taking the ACP exam, but honestly, in, in the order of preference, I would say go for, well, if you attended one of our trainings, I would say go for PSM, you know, first, and then go for CSM because PSM costs less. And through the training we provide, you already get ready for PSM more or less, you know, all the intricacies of Scrum. So get PSM certified, then get CSM certified, which it costs a little bit more, but at least you want to start getting value for low cost. So PSM, CSM, and then ACP. Or if your company demands CSM, do that first and do PSM because PSM will really kick the tires to make sure you understand Scrum and then go for ACP if you wish to. 
But in my mind, you can get so much from attending a course like ours as you're getting ready for the exam, because that will give you a very strong foundation in Agile. In fact, one of our students took our course, Roy and I, and then went for the CSM and said, I basically was just gliding and free, just free rolling because it was so easy having attended your course, going in for the CSM. And that would be my recommendation, but you can always read the Agile Practice Guide. All right, my friends, why don't we have a quick recap because we've talked about a lot of stuff today. And I wanna make sure that you got the major points I had to share. All right, so here are the steps one more time to be a great project manager. If you are a PMP, you know the talent triangle. Check that out on PMI site, the talent triangle. Understand that the Project Leadership Institute is available to help you, all right? projectleadershipinstitute.com. Know your strategic, technical, and leadership details and keep learning it. And honestly, like I said, everything rises and falls on leadership. This is what you want to hit first before anything else and everything else falls into place. All right. And then self-confidence, have a can-do attitude. Do not procrastinate. Be proactive with the team have the courage to share tough stuff and have difficult conversations. Have a schedule, a Kanban board, something, just something, please. Have something that will propel you forward on the timeline. Engage stakeholders proactively and follow a method. All right, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this breakdown of how to be a great PM, things you need to do, things you need to pay attention to. You got any questions? I wanna see them. Put them in the comments below or wherever you see on the screen. I wish you all the very best. Don't forget, let's see you. Those of you who are PMPs, you got certified on my watch. I want you to join the Project Leadership Institute. Get to the next level. All right? I'll see you there. You take care. Bye for now.